It's time for What You Need to Know, where you'll learn the strategies and tools you need to grow your YouTube channel. Here's your host, Nicole Sanchez. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to look better on camera. This is not just all about makeup, although we will cover that, and uh, we'll be talking about it for you gentlemen out there too. But we're also going to talk about lighting, camera angle, and other things like that. So let's jump right in. All right, the first thing, I mentioned this before in previous videos, is your lighting. It is so important to have good lighting. And if you're able to shoot during the day, often you can make a window work with just natural light. If that's where you're at, you're kind of starting, don't have lighting, uh, next choice would be to get some professional lighting and then to make sure you set it up correctly. When I first started, I had a camera, I had a light in front of me, but I didn't have anything really lighting my background. So I lit, my background looks rather dull and dingy. So it's things like that that you have to think about, kind of like a three point lighting setup. Like right now I have my one big light in front of me and I've got a couple lights here lighting my background. Now, if I were getting really fancy, it'd be really nice to have a hair light up above me, but I haven't gotten that fancy yet. So there's a lot that you can do. There are tons of great videos about good lighting. Make sure to check them out. Number two, let's talk about camera angles. If the camera is a bit above your eye level or at eye level, then you're a nice look like this and you don't get double or triple chins. If the camera is coming up from underneath you, first of all, people are looking up your nose and uh, it makes you look very chinish, even if you don't have a lot of chins. So it's just not the best angle for most people. So really do try to keep your camera angle, you know, at your eye line or a bit above. It makes a huge, huge difference to what you look like in your video. You can experiment with this by taking some pictures or just a little bit of test video and just see which angle is most attractive for you. Another thing that a photographer told me one time that I thought was really interesting was uh, she said that if you put your camera a little further away and then zoom in a bit, it just somehow is a more flattering look on the face somehow the way that the camera you know, angle is, it just somehow makes your face look a little bit um, more in proportion. So definitely try that. I believe that I've got my camera a little further than it needs to be and did a bit of a zoom to get that uh, better looking effect uh, on both the cameras that I have. I have found it definitely does look better. Now in terms of grooming, okay, we don't all need to look like movie stars when we are on camera, but there's just a few things you can do that'll probably give you a little bit more confidence. Uh, you know, brush your hair, Wash your face so you don't look too shiny or, or if you are too dry, moisturize a bit. And then for the gentlemen out there, it is amazing what some powder can do. Now our anchor uh, at work, we always have him put a bit of powder on. Young, great looking guy, but you know, people just aren't born with perfect textured skin. He has no blemish or anything, but you know, sometimes we get a little bit of redness here or there, whatever. And so a bit of a foundation type of a powder is amazing. And he just puts it on himself most of the time. Looks fantastic. A lot of times, depending on how many people are shooting, what's going on, we will hire a professional makeup artist and you know, they'll do a bit of concealer, maybe a light bit of foundation, some powder, and then just a bit of lip balm, nothing shiny, but just you know, to make the lips look, I guess, more healthful, a little more moisturized. So for you gentlemen out there, I would probably recommend uh, Ket powders. They've got a great foundation powder. Uh, Makeup Forever is one that is very popular also. And um, I'll list some stuff down below for you guys. And then the other thing too that you might want to think about that people don't always think about is uh, gentlemen, as you get older, usually your um, eyebrows can grow quite a bit and get a little bit more out of control than they were when you were younger. So if you're starting to get that kind of very, I don't know how to say it, kind of the look where they're kind of growing kind of straight up there. That is something that you can either very, you know, start, don't, don't go too hard with this, gently trim that. Maybe you can go to uh, a beauty salon that does, you know, eyebrow uh, grooming and they can kind of do a little tiny bit. They don't, not to get eyebrows like a lady, so just to kind of get them a little bit into control and thinned. I was at a, uh, makeup convention one time and I attended a seminar by one of the top eyebrow people and she spent you know 30 minutes just talking about what she called boy brows and brow grooming uh, because sometimes some will have a lot more hair in one than the other and you can kind of even that out so again 
not a giant deal, but if you get like the hair sticking up like that, just give them a little trim. And that little tiny scissors, um, they're really good ones. I think they're like $12. I'll leave them down below. Ladies, they're amazing also for trimming ours or cutting false eyelashes or all kinds of things. I love these. For the ladies, if you just put on a little bit of concealer, if you feel like you're looking a little bit tired, that can make, make a huge difference. Also, you know, a light foundation or a bit of powder, you know, make you look a little less shiny. Oh, and speaking of powder, guys, if you have a receding hairline or you're balding, take a look and if you're looking really shiny, for sure, bring the powder up there. It makes a huge difference. You don't have that glow going off of the top of your head. Um, but ladies, you know, again, as much or as little makeup as you want, if you really want to do bare, bare minimum, I would suggest just a bit of mascara to open up the eyes and a bit of a lip balm or maybe a lip stain or something, just a little tiny bit. That works great. And then from that point on, maybe add a bit of concealer. Um, you know, if you like foundation, foundation, I love everything. So I, I go pretty ham with the makeup, but I do that every single day, whether I'm filming or not. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And then, you know, ladies, another thing, if you really want to look awake, you know, I have to say false eyelashes are amazing. Uh, whether you do giant ones or just little, this one is called babies, they're very small. I always wore them when I was doing uh, events because I put them on and no one knew I was wearing them. I just look like I had great eyelashes. They're really inexpensive. I can link them below. Uh, and they're by Ardell, yeah, babies by Ardell. And if you have trouble putting lashes on, let me tell you a little trick. If you cut them into thirds, and then just put on one piece and then another piece and another piece. Super duper easy. Or maybe you just want to just put little pieces just on the edges to give a little bit of a lift to the eyes. It's amazing. And then the other thing too is eyebrows. Eyebrows make such a difference with framing your face, opening up your eyes. So, you know, a little bit of a tinted brow gel or eye pencil, eye pencil, brow pencil will go a very, very long way. So, you know, again, Totally up to you, but a little bit of powder, a little bit of lip balm, ladies, some mascara. Huge, huge difference. Now let's talk about what you are wearing your attire. And my dog is drinking and making a whole bunch of noise over there. I'm sorry, we will just keep on going. He just seems to love to interrupt when I am filming. It's kind of funny. He has been up here in like two hours while I was working. All right. So in terms of what you're wearing, you want to wear something that doesn't blend into your background that uh, really, I guess, fits for the video that you're doing, right? So if you are somebody who's talking about computer tech, well, you know, a hoodie, super casual is probably good. If you're an attorney, you probably don't want a collar on your shirt, right? I mean, unless your vibe is a t-shirt and more casual and you're like the surfer attorney, I don't know. Just, you kind of think about your audience, right? What, you know, kind of an impression you are trying to make uh, in your video. Also, definitely avoid fine patterns that can wing people's eyes out and on camera can look kind of jittery, uh, really small florals, things like that don't usually look that great. Um, you know, again, just look at your viewfinder on your camera or maybe just take a test, you know, little 20 second video and look at it and make sure you like the look uh, because that can also make a real difference. Another suggestion for you is when you've got your camera and everything up and ready to go and you're rolling, you might want to double check what you look like. So I recommend having a mirror right in front of you so you can check yourself out. This one I got ages ago. It's just, you know, rando, you know, mirror from Amazon. Uh, but it's really handy to have here because I can take a last look. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? Uh, if I ate before, do I have anything in my teeth? I generally do brush my teeth before I film because I'm always worried that I'm going to do all the work of filming a video and then I will see something in my teeth or something halfway through. So um, that's something I just do, but yeah. Uh, having a mirror or even you just had a small mirror, just something so you can, can check yourself out before you get started. Because, you know, in last second changing the light or, or doing something, or, you know, reaching over to push the button, you know, I don't know, maybe you messed up your hair or smeared your lipstick or whatever like that. So I really like having a mirror that I can check right before I get started to make sure that everything is how it is supposed to be. Another thing I would suggest is give yourself a minute before you start filming. Just maybe take a few deep breaths, you know, just maybe just for a sec, just shut your eyes, just 
relax for a minute before you get started because most of us are doing our videos, you know, while we're juggling careers and children and spouses and dogs and, you know, all kinds of things going on, elderly parents. So sometimes it just is nice to have a minute of quiet, gather yourself together before you get started. And I feel like that really comes through in your presence on camera, that you're happy or relaxed, you're ready to talk about whatever your subject is or do whatever you're doing. Maybe you do more of an action type of a video. I still think that getting yourself centered or pumped up, maybe you need to jump up and down a few times, right? Get that energy going, just depending on what your topic is, but it really will shine through and also help with your presence and how you come across on camera. Another tip, and we do this all the time when I'm at work, uh, when we are doing shoots. Um, in case you don't know, by the way, I didn't say at the beginning, but uh, I run three YouTube channels for a major tech company, as well as have my own channel uh, that's a luxury hair care and lifestyle channel. Um, and then of course I'm on 100 TV. Uh, but anyhow, one thing that we do all the time, even with seasoned, pros that we are filming is we will have them redo their intro at the end. The reason being is a lot of times, whether it's just a single speaker or it's people doing an interview, everyone's just a little bit more nervous at the beginning, right? When you get started. So there's nothing wrong with redoing your intro when you're totally done, when you're all warmed up, you've kind of done it. You know, you said what you need to say, you're probably more relaxed, and then you just start over, do a couple more takes of your intro, and it will very likely be one of the ones that you use. I mean, you know, sometimes you might get it first take and you know it, you don't need to do that. But a lot of times we do that, you know, and also if you're ever doing a video with a couple people, sometimes when you do your intro, your intro might've been top notch and dead on, but the other person might've been fidgeting, not knowing where to look, you know, that kind of a thing. And if you're both going to be in that shot, if you can't just zoom in on yourself uh, and the other person's looking really awkward, you probably wanna redo it just for their sake and just remind them to look maybe at the camera while you're talking to the camera and then look at you when you guys start talking to each other. That is something else I would highly recommend. And yes, yeah, so a lot of times we redo intros and often we'll do outros several times um, when we are filming videos across the board, across all the different channels. It really makes a difference because you really gonna nail that intro to grab the viewer's attention in the beginning. One thing I did mention when I was talking about having the mirror here in front of me is I always have a hairbrush here also. That way you can at the last second and you see something wrong with your hair, you don't have to get up and go find a hairbrush, just have it right here. Those are some of the things before I get started, I mean, the, the mirror just lives here, but I'll grab my hairbrush and I will usually put a lipstick here so that I can always do any quick touch up before I get started, if I have messed anything up uh, before I want to get going, or if I drop something and you know I somehow you know mess up my hair, whatever you know, it's it's funny. I don't even understand sometimes how I mess my hair up so much, <laughs> but very handy to have a hairbrush right in front of you. If you have stray flyaway hairs and hairspray is not doing it for you, one trick a lot of people love is they will take clear brow gel. It's a bit stronger, and that way you can kind of get any flyaway hairs to not show. If I had a dark background, I would probably have a whole bunch showing. My background's lighter, so I'm sure I have some flyaways here, but they're not really showing because of my background. But if you have lighter hair with a dark background or darker hair with a light background and it's really bothering you, clear brow gel, you can get it super cheap at the drugstore. Ladies, for accessories, avoid a bunch of jangly bracelets because it gets really annoying with the sound. Uh, if they are jangling as you move your hands around or if you're putting your hand down onto a desk or something, just avoid those. A bracelet is fine, but several, if they're bangles, not really a great idea. Another thing I'd recommend is getting some hair shine spray. These are not hair sprays. They are something you spritz kind of in the air in a fine mist above your hair it kind of falls in your hair makes your hair super shiny it works for guys or girls and it's great for if you're going out and want your hair to look super healthy and nice they're wonderful and you just want to make sure the two brands i use really kind of all i'm using for years now i guess i should try some new ones but some of them have been too oily or weird um, but the moroccan oil shine spray 
and the Nature Lab Tokyo are wonderful. And a little goes a long way. Just, you know, a couple spritzes up in the air will do it for you. So you don't need to buy the big bottle. The small bottle will probably last you forever. And um, those I've tried and tested with my fine hair. Um, you know, I have a lot of hair but it's very fine and gets weighted down very, very easily. I, I usually wash my hair every single day because it just, you know, it just gets too link if I don't do that. So Shine Spray is wonderful and looks great on camera. Let's talk about eyeliner for a minute, ladies. One thing I'd highly recommend is tight lining underneath your lash line, not like up into your waterline too hard, but that really makes a difference versus lining on top. It'll open up your eyes so much more. I like the Laura Mercier tight liner with their tight liner or the Esam kind of tight liner uh, brush where you just, you wet the brush, you put it into the Laura Mercier um, liner, wet it, it kind of makes, it, it gets in the brush and you just kind of push it up into your into your eyebrow, eyebrow, eyelashes. It was a long day. And um, then for me, I can't carry off dark eyeliner. I mean, maybe a little bit on the outer edges if I'm doing a very glam, heavy lash look, I can do it. But usually I just put a bit of a copper eyeliner in my light kind of lower lash line area here to make my eyes pop a bit more and open up more. Because with, with the dark, it just really, again, unless I'm doing a super you know, glam look where I'm kind of feathering out shadow and doing all that. It's just, it, it just drags my eyes down. I, it's funny, I found some pictures from back in the like 90s where, you know, we put more liner on the bottom and I just, my eyes just look like they're kind of sagging down and I was, you know, so young, right? I was like in my 20s and I'm like dragging my eyes down so high, how with this look. Um, so that's something, especially if you're over 40, you probably want to watch your liner. Now, some of you ladies I know have beautiful giant eyes and can carry that off. Um, but for me, I just go with a very small kind of a wing on top, tight line underneath, and just do a bit of a copper or something uh, at the bottom. I hope these tips serve you well. If you have any questions, please do put them down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.